Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and today's episode is going to feature this puzzle from Simon Ferrey called Prime Locations. Um, just to mention, fantastic interest in the uh, Mitchell Lee video on Patreon for $2 Patreons, not $3 Patreons. Um, and, you know, his explanation of how he set and how to solve his astonishingly hard um, odd even little killer that we posted is garnering rave reviews unsurprisingly now um, also just trailing the, all our apps Miracle Sudoku is the newest very popular as well to go with the stable of others sandwich and classic will be getting updates within the week and um, just discord server as well really going well so what's going on in this puzzle well um, the prime locations refers to the red line. On the red line, every two connected cells add up to a prime number. So, not just in separate pairs, but any two that are next to each other add up to a prime number. Then apart from that, we have sandwich clues outside the puzzle, which show the digits, the sum of the digits between the one and the nine in that row or column. So for instance, in this column, the digits between the one and the nine, wherever they appear, add up to four. And one thermometer, which must increase from the bulb to the end. So that's what we've got. Let's see how this goes. Try it on the link, if you will, before my solve. I believe it's not too difficult, so do have a go. And um, I'm going to have a go now. Let's get cracking. So, um, well, the first thing to think about is none of the line links are diagonal. Now that's interesting because I think it means that every pair of digits must add up to an odd number. The only even number is two and although that can be a bit foxing in a puzzle like this if you have a, a link between two diagonal cells that could both be one, other than that Every prime number is an odd number, so they must all be odd prime totals on this. And every time you have a domino of two adding up to an odd number, one of them is odd and one of them is even. So around this, they must alternate all the way around. So either this set is evens and the white cells odd, or the other way around. It's absolutely got to be the case. Um, so I don't know which is which, but I'm sure we'll be able to use that as we go. Now let's start then, I probably won't start with that line, or indeed the thermometer clue which has four degrees of freedom. Let's start with some sandwich. So 35 is the maximum, 1 and 9 must be on the outside sandwiching all the other numbers which do add up to 35. Now I'm marking green cells which can't possibly contain 1 or 9 because of the clues in their rows. In this row, anything under five has to be one cell sandwiched in between one and nine. Ah, now, what about the thermometer on a 13 clue? Um, I think this means that the one and the nine... Ah, yes, okay, I mean, the way to look at it is these three, gre these three cells that aren't at the ends of the thermometer can't be one or nine. So they must be green by this method I'm using. Um, and that means that the one and the nine in this column can only be a maximum of, separated by a maximum of three cells for a sum of 13. So they must actually be on the ends of the thermometer and we get digits in the grid. They must be one and nine. So what are the innies here? Well, they add up to 13, and because of that theorem I mentioned before that about alternating odd and even numbers, there must be one even, no, two even numbers and one odd on this. So the next number could be two or four. Oh, sorry, red's a poor choice. I mean, you might get to solve this on a slightly different colored line um, when you click on the link. Um, three or five, although this couldn't go four, five actually, because that would be nine in two cells on the red line, and that's not a prime. 
238, that's certainly possible. 256 is possible. 45 is not possible as I explained. So actually that can't be a 4. You can't get anything that's going to work better than that. So 2 is going to be the number there. Um, right, sorry, I'm just going to pause while I stop the beeping. Hang on a second. Right, sorry about that. Now, 2... So yes, either 3 and 8 or 5 and 6. I think both work. They make... 2 and 3 is 5, 2 and 5 is 7, 5 and 6 is 11, 5 and 8 is 13. They all work. So I can't make further progress on that at the moment. Now, what has this told us? Right, with the um, sandwich clues still ruling out cells that had not, could not contain the 1 or the 9. Ah, and we do now know that that's even. So by that idea that we had earlier, all of these cells will be even. Oh, that's going to leave me with a, a quandary about what colouring to use. I think I'm going to keep going with the green colouring for now, and we'll deal with that if we have to in due course. So this could be, ah, but these can't be 2 and 4 together, because that would add up to 6, obviously not a prime. So that is not the 9. So the 9 goes over this side, 6, that's fine with the even thing. Right, 9 here. Those are all green. Not sure where one goes in column nine, but it's got to be down here. That makes all of these green in box nine. Ah, and not this row has a two clue. So that can't be there because this can't be one. So let's green out all of those and put in the two and the one. They must be there and there. Uh, get rid of that and green there, right. So now that's green too. In fact, those are both green. They're in a box with one and nine. So 13 clue here. Now, if that's possible. Okay, not sure there. Let's add a 13 clue down here with the same pattern. All right, but the two clue here is resolved. The one and nine have to be in columns three and five. Now, what does that... Ah, and in this column, column four, we've got a zero clue and only two left that can be next to each other for the one and nine. So that's straightforward enough. They must be there. That places the one and nine in column six. And in row three... Sorry, row two and row eight. Well, the last one can't be... Um, a 1 or a 9 because they'd be too far away. In fact, that makes that a 1 or 9 for column 1. Getting a lot of 1s or 9s without actually being able to resolve them yet. That must come in due course. That can't be. Right, now a 9 here. This is not possible to be a 1 or a 9 because of the distance from there. But that means that this, which is a 1 or a 9, cannot go left because it needs at least two cells to make the 9. So it's over here. Oh, in fact, I could have done that from uh, this 4 clue anyway. The fact that I had to fit in a 1 or a 9. Right. This is a 1 or a 9 for the 0 clue. Um, and I think we have got them all pretty much done now. Let's just green those. This must be the last one in box four, and that's the last one in box seven. Right, so now let's clear out all the colouring that I've done to establish the ones and nines. Actually, that's quite interesting. The only places where I have established which is one and which is nine are a, a kind of separate set. The others will all resolve when I know what one of them is. Okay, so let's... 2 and 1 is 3, 2 and 9 is 11, that's fine. Right, 6 and 9 is 15, so that cannot be a 9. So we've used the odd even constraint, or the, sorry, the prime number constraint there, and that is going to resolve all of the 1s and 9s in the grid, which is very handy. Oh, I've missed a 1, a space for a 1 up here. Hang on, I'll do that in a moment. I haven't worked it out yet. 9, 1. 
So that is all the ones and nines. Um, but where does the last one go? It must be there. Okay. So now here, nine and eight would be 17, which is fine, but nine and six would be 15, which is not. So I'm plan I'm not so quick with calculating the primes. So hopefully most of this can be done now with regular and sandwich Sudoku. Let's see how we get on. These two sets of sandwiches are both 13, so that's 26. Just going to try this out. Add the two lots of ones and nines, that's 46. And then this set is 45 minus 16 is 29, added to 46 is 75. Yes, that's perfect. These other two cells in the row have to be 8 and 7. Uh, to make the total for these two boxes up to 90. So that was all using the um, fact that 1 to 9 adds up to 45. We can tell what those are, therefore, because we know what they're not in 1 to 9. And here we have the two 1s and 9s and the two sums. And they did give a really useful total. Um, that was probably pointless, but it was fun to do. Right, let's just have a look down the horizontal clues after that. Six we've done. In row four, that's got to be a three and four to go with the two. Row five's done. Row six, the outie has to be a six to make eight, seven, five, four, three, two, add up to 29. Done that. 13's a bit difficult to decide there. And we've done that. Okay, let's have a look at the down, see if there's anything easy. 21. No, don't know. 25. These two must add up to 10. Um, 11 has to include a 2. Must be in one of those two cells by Sudoku. Ah, yes, and look, what we discovered over here is important. 9 can never be next to 6 on the line. So neither of those can be a 6. And that means because they both have to be even to follow this odd, even, alternating course. They have to be 2 and 4. Um, and they go with a 5. So I can actually fill the 5 in the middle. Uh, 0, 35, we've done that. 23 here. So the outies have to add up to 12. So that one is 4 or 5. Uh, 13, we've done that on the thermo. We've done the 4 and we've done the 18. Oh. So it's mainly these 13s that we have left to uh, resolve and some of the 20 something totals. Right, now that red line, not a problem. 11 or 13 are both prime, so they're fine. How do we, okay, this one has to be odd, obviously to go with a six, six, one, four, nine, two. So it's three, five or seven, and it can't be three because six and three is a composite number, not a prime. That's probably not the best way to go about this. Let's focus a bit more on the sandwiches and see if I'm missing something useful there. Nine, three, four, one. Ah, oh, look, regular Sudoku, eight and six there. So that's a pair in the center. This is two, five and seven because of what's needed in box five. That makes this a four. So we've actually resolved that 11 total. This is a three, it's the last digit in the clue. Four and three is seven, that's fine. Now, three and four, six or eight. Three and six is no good. Um, seven, 11, 17, 13, oh. The others are all possible. Right, let's have a look up here. After the nine, we need an even number. Six or eight can't be six. Six can never be next to a nine on the line, so it's eight. Um, then we have five, six, seven at the top. No, three, six, seven, but this has to be even because it's next to a one on the line. So seven is in one of those two cells. That makes this one an eight. How did I know that was an eight from before? I can't remember. Anyway, the total here is 13, so this is four and three or two and five. The one on the line has to be odd, so that's three or five. Can't be three, because six and three would be nine. So five, 
not four, two there, makes that six, five, two work. This is a seven now, four and eight to place in the row. And suddenly these clues are giving us an awful lot. Two is there by Sudoku, a three, four pair at the bottom. This is a three, five pair, and that resolves this three and seven. Over there, we've got two, four, and five. This has to be even. No, oh, it could be two or four. Ah, oh, the seven has fixed that as an eight. That means this is a four, I think. Yeah, the outies have to add to 12. So that puts four and eight into column five. That's six and three. Um, right, five there and five there. So this is five. This is a two, four pair. Looking down at a four or eight, so that becomes eight. Four there. Seven here is a naked single. Three and six here, so they've got to go in odd, even, odd order. Five and eight down here, same thing applies. Four and three there. Three, seven, and six to go. This one must be a three because of that seven and six. This must be six because it needs to be even. Seven here. Three and so oh, something's gone wrong. That doesn't look right. What's gone wrong here? Let's rewind a little bit. See if I was right about here. Three and six, I was happy enough with that. Eight and five, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. This is where it's all gone wrong. One can't be next to a seven. Eight, nine, why did I make that four, three? Because I made that eight, four, Two, three, five, eight, one, seven, four. That could be a six. What have I done wrong here? Three and six both have to go up there at the moment. That doesn't look good. Ah, eight there is nonsense. Okay, so we'll keep going backwards actually until where I got two eights into row two. What a mess. Right, here we are at that point. I needed to put a 4 and 3 over here. I don't know what I said, but what I actually put in was a 4 and 8, and that was the problem. So 5, 8, 2, they all go in there. 8 fixes the 7. That fixes the 3, 7 over there. 4 and 6 to go in here. We can do that because of the 6 in box 1. 2 and 5, using the odd even there. Now, 3, 4, 8 here. The middle one has to be the odd one, so that's 3. That can't be four because five and four would add up to nine. Four, three, four. Haven't resolved the six, eight. This, however, is a seven now, so they're all done. Um, <clears throat> this is a five, and that does work for that 12 outies, which I got wrong before. Two, nine, five, one. Dear me, what a mess that was. Right, eight, nine, four, three, one. Six goes here. It can't go here because it wouldn't work for the line. There'd be evens next to each other. Um, and this can't be a seven to be next to a two or indeed an eight. So that's a five. So then we have two, seven, eight, six, three, four, seven to go in there in some order. Three and four here. Now again, the the line is very useful and the parity changes that are required. So these are eight here and seven and six here. And again, the parities work fine. Five, seven and six to go in down here. Take a bit more care. Three and five to go in there. So I haven't really been checking the line totals, but I will do that as part of my checking to just make sure that they all add up right, especially as that early mistake's thrown me a bit. Right, let's hit the check button. So that is telling us that all the kind of regular Sudoku rules have been obeyed. Now let's just have a look around the line. 1 and 6, 7, 11, 13, 11, 7, 13, 13, 11, 
13, 7, 3, 5, 11, 17, 11, 7, 11, 7, 7, 13, 11, 7, 5, yes, that's all right, 11, 17, 11, 7, 13, 17, 13, 7, 3. It all works fine. What a clever construction by, uh, by Simon Ferre there. That's really nice. Very interesting shape that you can manage to uh, achieve that all primes neighboring each other. Brilliant. Um, I think there may have been plenty of information in that puzzle. I think a few of those sandwich clues could probably have been withdrawn. It would be a harder puzzle, but I don't think that would necessarily make it more fun. So, oh, I lost the uh, the thermo bulb when I colored everything white. I didn't notice that. Luckily, that stage came after the thermo. Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching and hope to see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.